Yeah, in the last few classes, we have been looking at uh, the handling characteristics of a vehicle. Now, in that process, we developed, uh, of course, the understeer gradient, and we also uh, brought in a very simple technique uh, called the uh, Mamuro rhombus in order to understand uh, the vehicle behavior. These are, you know, simple techniques, but a lot more things happen uh, in the actual vehicle. In other words, the understeer gradients, one of the, remember, one of the, uh, our uh, definition for understeer gradient uh, is given by Wf by C alpha F minus Wr by C alpha R. Remember, I think I wrote that as K2 or something like that, okay. This was multiplied by Ay, if I remember right, this is what we had uh, defined. We defined uh, two ways in which you can do it, or in other words, we defined in, uh, uh, with two terms the understeer gradient. The other term, uh, the other understeer gradient is m into b c alpha r minus a c alpha f divided by l squared into c alpha r c alpha f, you know that is the other term. So, these are very simple uh, definitions uh, which came out by looking at the uh, tire, tires interaction with the vehicle and the road. But then the tire interaction should be brought out uh, much more in a much more detailed fashion and that is what we are going to see in this class and we are going to take whatever we are going to learn today to the next topic of subjective and objective evaluation of a vehicle. Okay. What do we mean by expanding this topic? It is very clear that this is affected by the weights that act on the front and the rear. Okay. There are other things that happen in the car which are going to affect this Wf and W, uh, Wf and Wr as well as the assumptions that we have made regarding the linear behavior of the tire. Remember what are the assumptions that we had made uh, in our bicycle model in order to obtain the definition for this understeer gradient. One is that we neglected the roll, number two is that we assumed a linear uh, behavior of the tire, right, and we neglected all other uh, aspects of uh, suspension uh, and steering. Handling is all about how the vehicle behaves when I give an input to the steering, would have, by now you would have realized that. Now, the input to the steering is of course in under your control and that is what is going to also give you a feedback about the vehicle. So, we have to understand in a much broader perspective these things. Okay. Let us now look at uh, first uh, from, a, from a physics point of view how what happens when you do not uh, have a tire which is linear. In other words, if I remove this assumption of linearity of a tire, let us see what happens. Okay. Before we go into the equations, let us see that. I am going to follow Gillespie, you know, for this lecture, but then we will take over and then look at other things from next class and please pay attention to this because this forms the basis for evaluating a car. In other words, it will be exciting to know how you are going to evaluate a car. If you are going to buy a car and you want to drive a car, you know, what all you should do in order to understand the behavior of the car is going to be the next lecture. Uh, and for that, this will form the basis, right? Okay. Now, let us look at the actual uh, diagram for the C alpha f. Or in other words, how actually the um, force um, developed okay, in terms of uh, the slip angle. Note that we had already said that f is at the normal load is going to play a role in the uh, de development of Fy. In other words, the stiffness, uh, what we call a stiffness depends upon the normal load that is acting. Okay. Now, why are we harping on this? Basically because when, uh, when you say for example, when you want to take a turn, all of us know that the vehicle is going to roll. Okay, especially 
initially is going straight, uh, both the wheels, left and the right wheels, uh, within small tolerance, uh, would say that both of them have the same reactions. Okay? So, when there is a roll of the vehicle, then these reactions, what we call as WF and WR, are going to change and the left wheel is going to have a different reaction and the right wheel is going to have a different reaction depending upon uh, it's, one is going to be higher and lower depending upon whether they take a turn to the right or left and so on. Right? So, what is important is to understand what happens due to load transfer. This is one type of load transfer. The other type of load transfer happens when you take a turn and start accelerating or decelerating. Okay. Again, all of you know that there is a load transfer from the front and the rear. So, the load transfer to the front and rear, uh, due, whether it is uh, due to braking or traction, is again going to have an effect on these things and is going to have, have an effect on understeer and oversteer gradients. So, load transfer is going to have an effect and so, the, this is the first thing. So, we have to understand how C alpha f varies. Let us say that, let us let me plot it like this. Let us say that this is the vertical load. I am going to plot the graph of, remember that we plotted alpha versus F y. I am going to plot this graph slightly differently. I am going to say that F y and I am going to plot it for different alphas. Okay? Let me call that as um, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. Okay? So, for different alphas. right? Now, of course, alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1 and alpha 3 is greater than alpha 2 and so on. Right? Now, let us say that I have say 4000 Newton that is acting um, in a tire. Okay? And that produces an F y, that is the F y which produces, that is good enough for me to say, uh, is what good enough for me to uh, equilibrate the centripetal accelerations. Okay? Right. Now, when there is a roll, why there is a roll, we will see it in a minute. When there is a roll, in other words, when the left and the uh, right or inner and the outer, or however you want to call it. Okay? When the loads get redistributed, look at what happens. Okay? For the same alpha 1, for the same alpha 1 which is the slip angle, okay? when the load comes down, say for example, it comes down to 2000, okay? the load or the stress, the, uh, sorry, the force that is produced comes down. Okay? And for the other tire, which is going to increase to 6000, this is going to increase. Okay? Now, this gives rise actually the total um, Fy, which is going to be less than less than what is produced before. In other words, because of the nonlinearity of the curve, note this carefully, because of the nonlinearity of the curve, when there is a change in load, the alpha that is produced, the alpha that is produced uh, is not good enough to equilibrate the centripetal acceleration. It is going to fall short. Okay? So, there has to be a larger alpha, there is going to be a larger alpha. Okay? Please note this is left and right, this is a tire which is left and right. So, front there is a left and right, rear there is a left and right. And remember that in our model, we have C alpha F and C alpha R to depict the stiffness of the front and the rear together in total. Right? So, what will happen now because of this, it is not good enough, the, the FY is not good enough to equilibrate centripetal uh, acceleration. So, this alpha has to shift up, the alpha that is produced is to shift up, 
right. So, that if this were the equilibrium say let us say that it is 3800 or something like that, if this has to be the equilibrium force ok, now I am falling short maybe I will get say 3400 ok, that difference of 400 has to be generated ok. So, I have to work at a higher alpha, higher alpha and that is such that ok, I will just exaggerate that here. So, this is the one which was initially was like this ok and I had fallen short. So, I have to now increase my alpha such that I come back to that 3800 ok. So, in other words, in other words the role the redistribution of the forces result in a change in the operating alpha right. Now, look at that closely when there is a change in alpha alpha f and alpha r that is going to produce a change in the understeer gradient ok, because after all that is alpha f minus alpha remember our delta is equal to alpha f minus alpha r and plus L by r and so on you know. So, alpha f and alpha r are going to have an effect on the understeer gradient. So, the very first thing is that due to this role there is a change in the operation of, of alphas and hence I have to have an additional term to my uh, understeer gradient right. So, what are the things that I have to do now? First of all I have to find out what is this change, what is this change right the between the left and the right or outer and inner let us call it as outer and inner left and right is not the correct one outer and inner right what is the change. Once I work out this change then I have to introduce the first thing is so the derivation which I would have to put now is what is what is the change in the normal that is the first thing I have to find out what is the change in the normal load ok. So, the next is I have to uh, next thing is that remove the linear the linear assumption for the tire and introduce and introduce a nonlinear uh, relationship let us call this as a say quadratic relationship let us say quadratic with respect to f z ok quadratic with respect to f z. Please note when I say linear the linear uh, relationship in the sense that we had only one c alpha f that is what I that is what I mean by a linear relationship in the sense that there is only one one c alpha f you know it was independent of f z ok it is it is independent of f z, but actually it is not independent of f z. So, we are um, in other words f y is a function of say a into f z. So, that you know that is the that is the only thing that we said you know now we are uh, we are going to say that it is a quadratic with respect to f z we will introduce that in a minute. So, note what we mean by that linearity the linearity is with respect to f z. Okay. So, once I do this then calculate the new alpha that is what we are going to do right. Um, let us look at a very simple diagram we will make this we will make a few comments to make it a bit complex and let us say that I have a solid axle just for illustration we will see how it can be uh, looked at for independent suspension ok. Let us say that ok. 
Okay, that's the sprung mass of the vehicle. Okay, and that is the what we call as the roll center. We will we will define this as roll center. I mean, we'll see what it is in a minute. Maybe you know that already. Roll center. Uh, let us say that uh, there are now Fy and Fz forces that are acting on the tyre. So, where will be the Fy forces that will be acting? Fy will be in the towards the right or the left? Right. Okay. So, this we will call as Fy outer and Fy inner. Right. And of course, there will be a normal load that will be acting, which is which we would call as F is at outer and F is at inner. Yeah. So this is yeah, this is turning turning like this. So actually like this to the right, and so the roll is to the left. That is why I call this as outer and this is uh, inner. I do not want to call it as left and right, okay, because it can be the other way. Right. Now, the concept of roll center, I, I am sure you had heard about this, that it is the it is the roll centers form a roll axis. I know that you had heard about this term roll axis and about which the actually the sprung mass rolls. Another way of looking at roll center is the center about which you can split in very simple mundane terms, you can split the sprung mass from the unsprung mass. Say for example, if you want to draw a free body diagram of, of this uh, for the especially for these forces, okay, then I can say that that is where I would take the reaction for the Fy. In other words, okay, the reaction for Fy okay, for this would be about that point. So, that would be the Fy. Okay. Of course, Fy is equal to Fy naught or O outer plus inner. Right. So, my job is to find out how, how does this vary. Okay. In order to do that, I have to look at what is called as roll stiffness. I have to look at the roll stiffness. Okay. Um, as the name indicates, it has everything to do with roll. So, it relates the moment that acts to the angle of roll phi. Right? Okay. Now, we will we will talk more about this roll center. Right now, we will say that there is a left roll, uh, sorry, front roll center, rear roll center, and they join, and what results in the roll axis, okay, and about which this roll takes place, right? So let us uh, let's say that this is yes, and let's say that this is T. Whatever derivation I am going to put here for the rigid axle can be extended to a independent axle, uh, independent suspension, sorry, independent suspension. For example, that is what you do for a, a car, okay, independent suspension by assuming that all these stiffnesses are dumped at the wheel position or dumped at the wheel position, right. So, it is very, very close. It is so it's something somewhere here. You can assume that it is a track which is yes. Clear? Okay. Now, let us say that uh, that angle okay, to which it rolls is phi. And that, that difference in the height is delta z and hence phi is equal to 
دلتا زد ولد باي يس كلير اوكي ناو هيلب مي تو ديتيرمين وات شود بي دي وات از دي roll stiffness note that delta z is equal to f by ks okay right how do you how do you go about this how do you think we can go about this simple yeah so delta z is p times s yeah so f into s which is the, creating the moment okay in is equal to the roll stiffness k phi into phi the moment that is created by this force is actually equal to the k phi into phi right from which you can write down half into ks into s squared is equal to k phi into phi. okay that's substituting for phi from this expression okay and then calculating the delta z by the difference okay i can write down that k phi is equal to half into ks into s squared right so this is what we call as the roll stiffness if i now so this is the relationship between the spring stiffness and the roll stiffness okay what i essentially did was to find out what are the forces two forces that causes a moment and that moment is what is given in the left hand side okay force into moment i mean the distance and the right hand side is the one which equilibrates it through k phi into phi which is k phi is the roll stiffness okay right this force per degree or radians multiplied by the degree okay now as i told you the first step is to find out what is the change in the normal load okay in order to do that let me use this diagram let me take moment okay let me take moment of all the forces that are acting about the center okay about the center now the springs take the normal load and as i said fy okay when i cut it this is fy is where the reaction for this is taken all right now how do we write this f is at not into t by 2 okay about this and that's the clockwise direction right then minus f is at inner into t by 2 this is in the anti clockwise direction right then minus fy right into h right h is the height and that is equal to that is the total moment that is created that's in the anti clockwise direction that is equal to k phi into phi the moment that is created what causes the roll that's what we are doing so the moment the total moment that's created is what causes the roll okay this is just for one suspension we had said what is the connection between the two and so we now have k phi into phi rearranging these terms f 
f z z not uh, outer and uh, minus f z inner bring that f y in the other uh, I mean to the other side. So, it becomes 2 f y into h divided by t, t is a track plus k phi into phi okay, into 2 divided by t. Let me call that I have to put the equation numbers properly and let us say that I will call this as equation 1 and that as equation 2. Yes. At this point, because I want to find out the difference between f is at outer and f is at inner. So, that is the that is what it is. Remember that remember that f is at outer plus f is at inner is equal to w f. So, two equations. Okay. So, my my job is to find out what is f is at outer and f is at inner. Right? That is why I am taking the moment about this. So, that makes my job easier because my expressions are neat. Right? If you want to take it up about any other point, as long as you get f z outer minus f z inner, it is fine. Right? Is roll center same as center? No, center of gravity locations are different. So, the roll center is different from roll center is different from center of gravity. Okay? It is, do you understand? It is the instantaneous center about which this, this rolls. Okay, that is not that is not the CG location. In fact, in fact, the roll center. I'm going to do that now. Okay, the roll axis is at a distance from the center of gravity, and that's going to cause a moment. Okay, a moment about the roll axis and so on and we, which we will go to derive now. Okay. So, uh, in other words, if you look at the side of the vehicle, right. So, the roll axis say for example, this is the center of gravity location, then there is a front roll center or rear roll, let us call that as rear and that is front. Okay there is a front roll center right and the line joining these two is what is called as the roll axis okay so it is an imaginary axis which runs about which this whole body rolls okay so that is the roll axis so a moment which is created because of the distance say for example, in the center of gravity location is away from it. Okay? So, the center of gravity uh, uh, at which say, see this th here is the point. So, let me draw uh, uh, the same you know let me cut that and show it or let me assume that to be a three dimensional view. I mean this is a, just an imaginary line I have draw, uh, joined I mean I have drawn. Let us say that that is the center of gravity location that is the center of gravity location. Okay? and this is the roll axis. Let us say that that is the height h right and the roll happens about this, okay. the roll happens about that. So, the center of gravity location now rolls or moves okay, by an angle phi okay. and for the whole body you know that that is where the weight w x and we know that that is how say f y x right. So, the moment about the roll axis then is given by the moment created by that w as well as f y clear ok. Any other question? Right? Okay. Write down the moment now. Let us see. Write down the moment. Let us call this as H1. Okay. 
okay the moment is now given by there are two things h1 into that's phi So W into H1, let me call that as moment W into H1 into sin phi, okay, that's the sin phi plus F phi is mv squared by r, v squared by r as our practice we will call that as you know we will write it like that so that that becomes a y okay into cos phi and that the roll axis is inclined at an angle psi or epsilon rather small angle. So that also, you know, the cos of this is actually the uh, factor which has an m phi. So that multiplied by. If you look at the geometry, you would notice that there are two angles. So that would be cos epsilon. Now I'm not going to uh, make it so complex. I'm going to assume that phi and epsilon are small. Okay, so that that becomes one this becomes 1 and that becomes 5. Yes. Yeah, two roll centers, front roll center and the rear roll center. Front roll center and rear roll center are characteristics of suspension. Now, there is a method of calculating, geometric method of calculating the roll centers that you would have studied in the vehicle systems. Yeah, but now we are we are saying that it rise, lies right here, okay, right at the top because of the symmetry positions, okay. We 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 assume that it is symmetric, okay. So roll axis would lie right at the bottom, okay. Right? We are not. I mean, it won't be unsymmetric. So we are looking at the symmetry. There's no reason why this has to be unsymmetric, right? So. Uh, simplify this so that is equal to what is that take out the w h1 so w h1 sin phi becomes phi so v squared by r g e plus phi that's the moment caused by this phi and this is also equal to what is that equal to? This is also equal to k phi front. What's k phi front? Okay, plus k phi rear. Okay, that is the roll stiffness multiplied by phi. Yes. Squared by arch. Okay. Phi H1. did I leave H1? V square by R G H1, and then there is going to be H1. So super Look at that carefully and tell me. Obviously, my here I left out H1, okay, and so this H1 will be there, okay. Obviously, there will be H1 into cos phi, right? So, H1 into cos phi. Right. So, let me simplify this and look at what is phi. Remember why are we doing this? Coming back to this graph, I want to find out what is the change in alpha. So let me call that, you know, let me give that equation numbers correctly. Let me call that as 4, that equation number 2, 
me, so let's call that as equation number 3. Let me call that as equation number 4 because when I resubstitute it back that would be fine. Okay. Now let me rearrange uh, those terms here in this so that I would get phi. So my whole idea is to get phi, right. So WH1, let me rearrange that. I will say WH1 into V squared by RG is equal to K phi front plus K phi rear minus WH1 into phi is equal to so that phi is equal to WH1 V squared by RG divided by K phi F plus K phi R minus WH1. All right. Okay. Now, the automobile engineers define what is called as roll rate define what is called as roll rate which is d phi by d a y. Note that carefully. It is not phi dot though I call this as roll uh, I mean roll rate it is d phi by d a y. What is that? Simple that is a y and so differentiating the first term. So, this would be W H one divided by K phi F plus K phi R minus W H one. That makes life easier when you want to define and it is about 5, 6 degrees usually per G. It is degree per G. So, in other words that tells you if I uh, if you know the roll rate and if you are taking a turn and you say that uh, I am subjecting my vehicle to 0.3 g then just multiply by roll rate you would know how much is the roll right clear fine. Now let us find out let us go back to equation number 2 right I have written that correctly now let us let us go back to equation number right okay let me write down that equation to the front and the rear okay this is generally we have written okay up to this i've written down generally then the whole vehicle so let me go back to the the equation number 2 and write it for the front and then write it for the rear Okay, I'm going to write down the final that expression, and that is that's quite simple. It's not k phi f into phi f f or k phi f into phi is equal to delta f is at front divided by two into t f minus w f h f into v squared r g and k phi r into phi is equal to delta f is at f by 2 into t r minus w r h r into v square by r g. Okay. What is that I have done? I have just okay, defined now delta what is now delta f is it? Look at that term there. What is delta f? Is it? Not what? What is delta f? Is it? So this term. What is this term? That's the last term. Okay. That's the last term. What is this term? That is the f y into h by t. That is that's this one. Okay. So, f y I have substituted in terms of w f into v squared r g. 
So, delta Fz by 2 is what I call as Fz naught minus or O minus Fz i, right? Okay. This is implicit assumption here in this step. The rest of it is only jugglery. There is an implicit assumption. The assumption is that the whole body, the whole body is stiff and that there is only one role. So, we said that this is applicable for front and rear, actually the whole body rolls as 1 phi. Okay? So, that is what is this expression. Now, once I know, once I know uh, what is k phi f, which is actually the property of the suspension, and once I know these factors, I can easily find out what is delta z f, sorry, delta z r, okay, and delta z f and delta z r. This is straightforward from these two expressions, and let me call that as 4 and this expression as say 5, and that as 6, and that as 7. Right? Okay. So, that is what I wanted. What is delta f is at front, the difference between the outer and the inner, and delta f is at rear, which is the difference between the outer and the inner in the rear. Okay? Once I know that, I am now going to use that in order to determine how my alpha f and alpha r varies. Any questions? Right? Clear? Okay. Now, remember that we had this expression in the front as C alpha f into alpha f and at the rear as C alpha r into alpha r. Okay? Let us now assume that C alpha f has a quadratic expression, okay? which I would write as A f z f minus b f z squared okay? into, so that this would become into alpha f. Right. Now, note that this if it is for single tyre, C alpha f is written for single tyre. For our bicycle model, I have to multiply this by 2. So, I will get 2a f z squared minus 2b, uh, sorry, f z f minus 2b into f z f squared. Right. Now, f y, say f y front or rear, is the sum of f z outer plus f z inner. What is it? I assume. This is what I assume. Okay. Now, is it correct? Okay, it's an approximation. Actually, we don't use in practice this expression. Okay. Actually, we can find out all these factors say for example, by assuming the tire to be a Paseca model right? and then we can uh, get this uh, correct redistribution okay, by this. Now, note that f z outer is equal to normal f z which is w f. So, I would call that as normal f z plus delta f z, delta f z is that by 2 okay? and f z outer, sorry inner is equal to f z minus delta f z. Okay. Now, substituting, uh, substituting that sorry f is that outer no no this is f is it not f now substituting this expression 
which I would call as this is called as 8 and that would call as 9 this whole expression substituting 9 into 8 okay 9 into 8 and then expanding this expression expand that expression I will write the final form I can write down FYF okay in a much broader expression taking into account the non-linearity with respect to FZ. Do that you know this is a very straightforward exercise. So now FY substitute it and then simplify it. So you will get 2A FZ minus 2B FZ squared minus 2B delta FZ squared into alpha. Remember what is delta F is it okay. So that it is delta F is it not minus delta F is it I divided by 2 okay. So that is the what we had there half of it. So F y is now given by this expression okay. So in other words if there is no load transfer this would have been the C alpha F. I told you that because of the load transfer that 2 into C alpha F uh, uh, sorry the 2 into this that is affected and you have an additional term. So let me call that as 10. Right. So I will write this as Fy front, this is Fy, general Fy, okay. Outer and inner, inner can be in the front as well as in the rear, right. So Fyf can be written as, since I said that is the C alpha F, C alpha F minus 2B delta F Z front squared into alpha F. F y r is equal to C alpha r minus 2 b delta f z rear squared into alpha r. And what is this? And this is equal to w f into v squared by rg and that is the fyf and that is equal to wr into v squared by rg. Remember what is my delta? Go back and have a look at that. What is delta? L by r plus alpha f minus alpha r from which my whole definitions everything came out right and and remember alpha f was written by wf by c alpha f and so on right. So that is what will give me my also my definition for k. I am going to substitute see let me call that as 11 and that is 12 substitute 11. Uh, for alpha from 11 to 12 okay and then we will get an expression for a new expression for delta. So what is that essentially we did just recapitulate we will we will expand that in the next class essentially what did we do we we realized that the load transfer is going to change alphas okay and the load transfer is due to roll and that the roll is controlled by what is called as roll stiffness. And the roll stiffness comes from the suspension stiffness, right? Okay, these are the things. So now, using that, and using simple uh, equilibrium, okay, due to forces that are acting in the body, we find out what is phi, right? And then from this, we assuming uh, assuming that the tire has a non nonlinear relationship with respect to F Z. Okay. We find out okay, the changes in alpha f because of introduction of 
both this nonlinearity as well as the role. Okay, that's what we did. Clear? So that gives rise to an expression for alpha f, which is f y divided by this, f y divided by that expression. Okay, and alpha r is equal to f y r divided by that expression. Okay, so I'm going to substitute that and then write down delta is equal to l by r plus f y f divided by c alpha f minus 2 b into delta f z squared plus f y r <coughs> divided by c alpha r minus 2 b delta f z r squared. Yes. Oh, sorry, minus. Exactly. So, in this model, in other words, we are not consider considering it as four tires. Okay. This is a simplified model. In in practice, in actuality, okay, this won't be the case. You're, what you are saying is absolutely right. So, alpha f front outer would be different from alpha f front inner and so on. Okay. Now, we are getting a gross effect here. The advantage is that we can look at it very easily and tell, tell what would be the effect of role. The disadvantage is that it has its limitation of having only one tire compressed, a bulk quantity and one tire at the rear. Right. So, this is a very simplified model, the bicycle model, but helps us to understand okay, what happens when there is a row transfer. So, in actual, if you want to really design a car, then you would take up to commercial say softwares that are available like Carsum or Adams or one of them okay, in order to understand actually how does this happen. Now, the whole idea here is to only illustrate, illustrate okay, in simple terms what happens. Okay, and we are going to use this in order to look at how to evaluate a car. Right? Load transfer has an effect on understeer or oversteer, period. One statement. How? In a simplified form, this equation is going to tell us. That is it. Clear? Okay. We will see the rest of it in the next class.